How can AI change the warfare? And you got one minute. I got one minute? Yeah. Uh, all right. This is, that's a tough question for one minute. Could AI create a situation where a drone can select the target itself? I think we shouldn't allow that. Well, can it be done? Sure. Thanks. That exchange between Sam Altman and Republican Senator Lindsey Graham is from 2023, when the company Altman co-founded still refused to collaborate with the military. Things have changed a lot since then, and now OpenAI is taking its biggest step into the defense sector. The tech giant previously had a policy against using its AI for military projects. Those rules were changed in January 2024, and now OpenAI is partnering with Enduro Industries, which makes autonomous defense systems like drones, surveillance towers, and robotic vehicles. But this partnership represents the first time for the startup with another company. And in this case, it's the $14 billion fast-growing defense tech company that's founded by Oculus creator Palmer Lucky, Enduro. It's part of a large trend of big tech warming up to defense amid an intensifying technology arms race with China and tensions with Russia. In a press release, Altman said the company builds AI to benefit people and support democratic values. Now, in the press release, the company's highlighting that in light of the race against adversaries like China, this strengthens the U.S. commitment to maintaining a technological edge and ensures that AI tools uphold democratic values while protecting military and critical infrastructure. It's a very similar sentiment to what we've heard from, for example, Palantir. I never know what we're allowed to say about these very sensitive contracts, but I, I'll tell you what it means right. for the nation. This country is focused on using AI to have a structural advantage in how we deploy and understand the battlefield, deploy our assets and understand the battlefield. Altman emphasized the partnership will help protect U.S. military personnel and that the collaboration will ensure AI tech is used responsibly. The partnership aims to enhance counter unmanned aircraft systems that detect, assess, and neutralize aerial threats. OpenAI's advanced models will be trained on Enduro's data about drone threats and air defense operations. The models will analyze large volumes of live sensor data collected by Enduro systems, including radar, cameras, and other detection tools. Using machine learning algorithms trained on Enduro's counter unmanned aircraft systems data library, the AI will identify patterns, classify potential threats, and prioritize responses. With natural language processing, the AI will generate actionable insights and recommend responses. They hope to improve situational awareness and aid faster decision-making by efficiently processing time-sensitive data. I expect that in 2025, we will have systems that people look at, even people who are skeptical of current progress, and say, wow, that, I did not expect that, that does. OpenAI's stance on working with the military has shifted dramatically. Founded in 2015, OpenAI has evolved from a nonprofit research organization co founded by Elon Musk and Sam Altman into a leader in artificial intelligence valued at over $150 billion. The company had a strict policy against working with the military until January 2024, when it changed its rules to allow use of its tech for non offensive military applications. OpenAI partnered with the Department of Defense on AI-based site-based security. The Enduro partnership is OpenAI's most direct engagement with the defense sector to date. The alliance marks a broader trend in Silicon Valley, where perceptions about defense tech have changed remarkably in recent years. Mark Zuckerberg is seeking, quote unquote, an active role in shaping technology policy with the incoming Trump administration. Meta, formerly known as Facebook, also initially restricted use of its AI models for military applications. The company revised that policy in November 2024, permitting U.S. government agencies and defense contractors to use its Llama AI models for national security purposes. The policy shift was influenced by reports that China researchers had developed military AI tools using the Llama model without authorization. The president-elect's AI policy could be a boon to the faster, unfettered development of the industry, though potentially at the expense of transparency and guardrails, if you believe that's necessary. President-elect Trump reportedly plans to launch a major initiative when he returns to the White House akin to the Manhattan Project. The Trump administration is expected to roll back regulations and aggressively seek to make America first in AI. 
Musk, who Trump appointed alongside Vivek Ramaswamy to lead a new group called the Department of Government Efficiency, or DOGE, is expected to influence AI usage in military and defense. Elon Musk and I are in a position to start the mass deportations of millions of unelected federal bureaucrats out of the DC bureaucracy. That too is how we're gonna save this country. And Dural is leading a growing array of well-funded startups competing for lucrative defense contracts. You're a character out of a movie. <laughs> you, you literally are a movie character. I, like, I, 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 I can't believe you're a real person. Well, let's, so let's talk about that. In under a decade, Andural Industries has established itself as a key player in the U.S. defense sector, which traditionally favors juggernauts like Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, and Northrop Grumman. When Palmer Lucky founded Andural in 2017, he was known as the 20-something tech prodigy who created the Oculus Rift VR headset. Lucky launched Oculus in 2012, and Facebook, now Meta, acquired it in 2014. Enduro may not exist today if Facebook didn't fire Lucky in 2017. Though Facebook did not publicly disclose a reason for his departure, Lucky says it's because of his support for then-President Trump. I mean, the reason that I started this company is, well, you know, I sold my last company, made a lot of money, and I really wanted to work on something that would actually make the world a better place, not the, the trite version that is spread around Silicon Valley where people pretend that, you know, better, better advertising algorithms are making the world a better place. Andrew builds autonomous systems like drones, jet fighters, surveillance towers, and counter drone tech. The startup's focus on artificial intelligence aligns with the Pentagon's desire for smarter, faster systems that can be deployed at scale. Enduro describes itself as software driven, with its lattice operating system as the backbone for its offerings. Its solutions are used across branches by military commanders, border security teams, and other decision makers in critical operations. Enduro's Sentry Tower is equipped for sensors and AI for perimeter security and border surveillance, which is expected to be a top priority in Trump's White House. Lucky says hyperscaling the deployment of weapons systems is key to national security and the future of warfare. But I'll tell you how I think about things. I don't think the United States needs to be the world police. I think we need to be the world gun store. We need to be able to provide our allies and our partners around the world with the tools that they need to turn themselves into prickly porcupines that nobody wants to step on. And I think that sending American lives overseas, boots on the ground, is not going to be the future of how we support, uh, support our friends around the world. I think it's going to be making sure that we can make things at a scale where they believe that our support for them is more than just words. We can actually send them the things that we say that we're willing to send them. I think Ukraine has really exposed this weakness in the United States foreign policy strategy, where we say we support all of these people, but they look and say, well, they can't even manufacture the basics like artillery shells or, 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 or you know, small missiles. How could I possibly count on these people to be able to cash these checks that they're writing? In September 2024, Andural introduced its new Barracuda cruise missiles that can be mass produced twice as fast for 30% less than traditional missiles. The designs feature 50% fewer parts, and their assembly is highly automated, requiring 95% fewer tools to build. Endural is headed into 2025 with a full plate, with plans to develop a hypersonic propulsion system called Denali, deploy its new Bolt drones for defense missions, expand its production of Ghost drones with a new factory in Australia, deliver a $200 million counter drone system for the Marines, and partner with Black Tech to create high-quality solid rocket motors. They're also expanding their footprint in space. Enduro is heading toward IPO as early as 2026. There's a lot of reasons for this. Without getting into the specifics of it, there's a lot of ways that uh, there's a lot of ways that you can drive a company like Andrel. I think in the long run, being publicly traded does lead you to be aligned with the American public in in a lot of ways. And the reality, for political reasons, practical reasons, financial reasons, uh, a privately traded company is never going to win something like the trillion dollar joint strike fighter effort. It's just not going to happen. Right. The, the, the Congress won't allow it to happen. Um, what are your predictions for defense tech in 2025? Let me know in the comments.